Welcome back to Off the Cuff, episode fo. Uh, I have a very special guest today, Mr. Mark uh, Rebel Tits, as I call him. Um, but you guys might know him as Mark Rebouille, or Rebouille, or Reboha, or Rebetiti, or Rebedi, or Rebelili, uh, or Mark Rebelit, you know? Uh, he won't correct you. Uh, we cover it in the episode, but uh, he's one of the most talented guys on the internet right now. Uh, the Mozart Dallas, uh, the Loop Daddy. I mean, if you're on the internet, you are seeing him everywhere. Uh, Mark and I's friendship goes back a little bit. Uh, we knew of each other. You know, as you know, I am the creator of uh, Let Me Suck Your Titties, which has uh, etched me in internet history for the rest of eternity. Uh, which is kind of crazy to think about. But, uh, yeah, I've made it to that elite class of uh, I will forever be shared on tweets about tits. And uh, I'm grateful. I really am. I truly am. Uh, it's probably my biggest claim to fame. Uh, and, you know, I just I just want to thank God every day for that. Uh, quick uh, mental health check-in with me. Um, I fainted the other night. Uh, Selena was talking to me about... Uh, where, where did I get strawberry seltzer? And I went to answer her. And the next thing I know, I woke up on the floor, um, which was kind of crazy. I haven't had one of those uh, in, oh, I want to say like two years. Uh, but I was very dehydrated because I just started exercising. Um, and I think uh, I sweat a lot and I'm not used to ex My entire body feels like I got hit by a bus and then thrown in front of a train, peed on, and then thrown out of a helicopter. That's what my body feels like. Um, I've been able to move. I've been able to wipe my butt, which has been awesome. Uh, but other than that, function, like putting food in my mouth has been hard because my arms hurt so much. Uh, my legs, I've been walking like Vito Spatafore from The Sopranos, just like hobbling around. Uh, but yes, uh, I don't know what it was. I don't really faint, so I was very, like, uh, caught off guard. But, um, yeah, I'm going to go get some, like, blood work done and get, like, checked out. But I don't know. It's like she was talking to me, and the last thing I remember is being like, and then, bah! And then I woke up on the ground. She was just standing over me. And I was like, well, this is the way I am. She was like, are you okay? And I was like, I had no idea what was going on. Very scary. Passing out is one of the scariest things there is. Uh, but yeah, that's... Uh, but other than that, I've been okay. I've had like a couple panic attacks this week. Um, but I've been able to really uh, channel them. There's this uh, hour-long meditation that I use prior to sleep on YouTube. I'll put the link below. Uh, that always helps me go to sleep, like even if I'm having like panic attacks. But... Yeah, the pass out, the, I had a faint spell, which was crazy. I haven't fainted in so long. So to actually faint was kind of wild. Uh, but I'm doing good. And, uh, you know, let's talk to the man of the hour, Mr. Mark Rebelle, Rapatutoto, the loop daddy himself. Here you go. All right, everybody. He's here. The man, the myth, the legend, Mark Rebel Tits. He's here. <laughs> How do you how do you feel? It's Mark Rebouille, Reb, Rebouille right? Rubbye. Rubbye. So it's it's yes. Mark Rubbye. I'm here you're, with you're, Danny with Danny Lo, Lo Penis coming yeah. up in this bitch. <laughs> as uh, as two uh, as two artists uh, whose names get butchered all the time. Yeah. Do, you, do you correct people when they fuck your name up, or you just run with it? Nah, dude. They've been fucking it up since I was a little kid. It's just not worth the pain. It's not worth the. If they ask me, then I'll correct them. But right that, now, now yours is it low priori? It's it's low priori. Low priori. Fuck, yeah, that was yeah, close. yeah. You know, but uh, low priori sounds like like you know my IQ. Low priori. My yeah, my IQ goes up thirty points, and so does my credit. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so keep it. We're trying to keep it down. Trying to one hundred, one hundred percent. So listen, yeah. um, off the cuff is a podcast. You know, we talk about mental health. Uh, we also just talk about, you know, what it's like to talk to people who are, you know, young entrepreneurs, people who are self-starters, uh, people yeah. who started on one trajectory to do some kind of work and then uh, varied off into something else, which we both have mm. done. 
Uh, one thing is, is I want people to know is that Mark and I have been friends for a while. Um, and then when you, I, all right. So I made, let me suck your titties. All right. (laughs) Yes. So let's just get into that. Let's get, that's how I got to know you. That's how I got to know you. So the year is like 2013. I make this song called let me suck your titties. It's a vine. It's huge. Um, it still gets shared to this day. And then someone shows me your song. Um, look at that ass. <laughs> so this is how I know. Listen, I consider myself one of the goats of like uh, female anatomy songs. <laughs> so, you know, you know, you the person. Arguably are. You yeah. inarguably are. Thank you. I appreciate that. So then I hear. Yeah, uh, look at that ass. Look at that ass. I want to yeah. see that ass. So I hear that. So now I know that another goat has entered the chat when people start tagging me in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, we're, we're, so, we're covering the full body. We are, we're doing our part to cover the whole thing. Our our destinies have been linked since before we even knew. That's right. That's you know right. what I mean? Like I took the yeah. titty route. You took the ass route. Um. <laughs> Almost so bad that if I sing about anything else, people get upset. <laughs> and dude, you want to know something bizarre is that I'm, I'm actually, I'm much more of a titty guy. I, I, I'm much more of a titty guy. And I'm an ass guy. Get the fuck out yeah. of here. Yeah. So like I pigeonholed myself with the, a- with the titties and you pigeonholed <laughs> yourself with the ass. I know, dude. I know. We got wow, caught that's up. that's crazy. We, we got, got caught up. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know. But um, I'm just so happy that uh, it's like when you see two people who you've loved from these certain videos and then they're yeah. friends and it's like all is right with the world. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, now, all I is the right same with the way. world. That's so, right. I wanted to ask you just a couple questions from the jump. Uh, our musical backgrounds are very different. Um, mm-hmm. You went to performing arts school at a very young age, right? I did. Yeah. Yeah. I was doing like acting and I mean, I've been playing piano as a hobby, like being doing lessons and shit since I was like five. Um, but the, the real thing that I was trying to do was acting. And I did that community regional theater and then did it, did it in high school and then a year of college before I dropped out. So did you want to do like musical acting or did you want to do like serious, like Denzel type shit? I wanted to do some Denzel type shit for sure. You right, know? right, like right. I, I, I succeeded, I think a little more in the musical sphere. I did like, I was like Harold Hill and the music man in middle school <laughs> and then some other musical bullshit, but, and I enjoyed it, but like, yeah, I wanted to be taken seriously, you know? Yeah. 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 I mean, I think an, another thing, especially with, see, I had no really musical training. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, I, like I would sing in the hallways of school and yeah. like, the teachers would come up to me and be like, oh, like you should like sing in the play. And then obviously as a 12 year old boy, I go, that's gay. And, <laughs> right. uh, and I don't do it. And then years later, I'm like, you know what? I should have did all of that shit. Yeah. Man. Now, were, were you in like plays and stuff growing up? Like, were you like all in entertainment yeah. since you were four or five? Pretty much. I mean, just like not in any professional way, but like in school, and in my interest, yeah, I was for sure like artsy fartsy shit. I mean, I was like watching, Always. watching a lot of movies, you know, all of the theater shit, improv classes, and all of that. Yeah, so it was, it was a, I was not at all like a macho kid. I was pretty weak and flimsy. No sports. <laughs> I mean, the sports were like tennis and shit. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. it was all, yeah, yeah. It was. I, I, I was very much in that camp. So, um, yeah, so growing up, um, so to put, get your, your parents to put you into a school like that, somebody, they had to see it in you first. I'm guessing. I guess so. Now, now when you went to middle school, did you go to a regular middle school? Did you continue in the performing arts? uh, It was a regular middle school, but they did shows, you know, like, I guess every school does that. Yeah. yeah, Like they all have like. So yeah, I was in those shows, like any show in any school that I could be in, I was in. Okay. And then once I got to high school, it was like, I was in the, you know, there was like acting or there was theater, dance, music, and visual art. And I was in theater. Okay. Um, And it was like a very focused arts high school. 
but um, but yeah, I mean, any opportunity, and then you know, I'm applying to fucking NYU and all this shit, and it's just at a certain point, I I, I fell out of love for some reason with the culture, with like the with the whole theater shit where everyone's in character all the time, and you can't act, you can't have a conversation with somebody. It gets yeah. annoying, you know. Yeah, everyone's yeah, yeah, yeah. was fucking uh, doing bits <laughs> all the time. I well, love doing bits, but like not all the time, you know. Yeah, you know, bits are great. Bits are what get me through the day. But you got to think about it. For uh, people like us, acting, I feel like I take I took acting in classic film when I was in college for five minutes. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was uh, there for like ten minutes, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I people were always actors are way too into themselves in terms of like staying in their character which a part of me is jealous of like i wish i could commit to something that well but like i don't even know what i want to eat for breakfast yeah you know <laughs> yeah so in terms in terms of what your transformation from acting to um because here listen we all know everyone knows you from your music i've known you since before you were doing music when you finessed that karen for an iPhone. <laughs> Just a little piece of shit from day one. So listen, all right. So this kid's known as the Mozart of Dallas. He's known yeah. as the as the Loop Daddy. Uh, yes, sir. So many nicknames, you know? Yeah. And I know you as the fucking little kid <laughs> who, who finessed an overzealous white lady at, yes. at for a spot in iPhone line. Tell me the story. Tell me how this happened. Tell me, because also I want to get into something off of that, but tell me also how this all came to be. Dude, that was, that was a great day for like childhood <laughs> me because I was just like, I was, I was just a nerd. Like, you know, I was doing acting shit and then also really always obsessed with like technology. And when this, you know, I had gotten into iPod, which at the time, if anyone remembers that shit it was a hot debate between like mp3 players from sony and the like and creative and a bunch of those other companies and then ipod came in with this like monolith of a device that had like brushed steel on the back it was like gla and beautiful but it was way overpriced right you know it was a lot more expensive than like the other offerings from from other people but it, and it did the same shit it had more space you could hold more songs on it and it had skip protection but so did some of the others it was a whole thing and around this time the iphone was announced and the iphone also caught a ton of shit no one liked it everyone yeah. was like this is fucking stupid who wants to type with their fingers on a thing that was huge and uh yeah, it was like there's going to be fingerprints on the glass. Sounds completely ridiculous now. Like, no one's going to want to type on a keyboard on a screen. It's the same shit today, dude. It's exactly the same shit that it has been since they announced it. So anyway, I was super pumped for it. And this was also back in the day when there were, like, lines for product releases, which doesn't really happen anymore. I mean, if you're in a line for a product release, you, like, pre-ordered something, yeah. and you're going to pick it up. And, but back then it was like, get in line and hope that you get one. So I got, I got to this store at like four or five in the morning or something like that. And, uh, I was the first person at the store, which was surprising to me. I thought that people were going to, there was going to already be a bunch of people there, but I was the first person there. And so I took a seat and my friend came and met me. Uh, my friend Colin, he came and met me. And he like sat with me the whole day for some reason. We were just hanging out the whole day. So shout it was out like to Colin. Shout out to Colin. A huge shout out to Colin because he like made this shit happen. <laughs> really, <laughs> see, he was there, but he wasn't buying a phone. He was just chilling with me. But yeah. he was second in line. So like we were sitting there waiting the whole day, and then as soon as like ten a.m. rolls around, people start to show up. Up, 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 up. It was like hundreds of people in line at this point, and this like Porsche Cayenne. And immediately after this Porsche, which is kind of fucking weird, a bunch of news trucks roll up. So it's like the Porsche and the news trucks mm. roll up. This bitch has uh, wads of cash. Yeah, so much money in the video. Just rolls of cash. Just, just coming up with, with, with a bunch of cash. And 
I'm sort of trying to figure out what's going on. I'm trying to stay in line, but then, you know, that my dad gets there cause he was sort of wanted to see what was up. So we find out that this chick is trying to buy, you know, she's, she's trying to buy the store out. Um, <laughs> but it was a little odd because she wanted to buy the store out. So she wanted to buy me out so that she could be first and buy, buy the store out. Right. And so I was like, all right. I mean, I'm a little kid at the time. I'm like 17, 16 or something. So this is already blowing my mind. And there's like news cameras in my face and shit. And I'm like, dude, what am I, what do I do? I was like, all right, if I can at least ask for the amount that I was going to spend on the phone, then like, if I don't get the phone, it's all right. Like I got the money. Right. Um, so, so I asked her for like a grand, I think, which was so much money to me. I was like a thousand dollars. Remember how much money a thousand dollars was when you were like That's 17? Insane. You could buy a house. Like you thought you could. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I could buy anything with this. Yeah, you're like, it's retirement. Like, yeah. that's retirement. <laughs> I never have to you're fucking like, work again. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I'm spending a buck 25 on lunch at school. So, like, a thousand bucks? What that's, the fuck? That's lunch from asking? fucking freshman to fucking senior year. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, dude. This is so much money. So, I thought she was going to say, and, like, of course, looking back on it, she must have had, like, 20, 30 grand in cash. I could have been like, yeah, bitch, 20 grand. Let's go. Yeah. But, but so, I, so, so I asked for 1000 bucks, and, and we negotiated down to, like, 800 bucks, I think. And so we struck a deal. I got the 800 bucks. I gave her my place in line. Colin's still there. MVP. I take Colin's place. I'm, I'm now second in line. I'm still second in line. So then it's pretty much ex happened exactly like it did in the news story. They open the door to the store. She walks in. She's like, cash, give me all the phones. And they're like, we're very sorry, ma'am. It's a one phone per customer rule. <laughs> did, and did and, you sell that rule? <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I just took a risk. I just took a risk on it. Dude, when That's they go to you, when they cut to you and they're like, he, oh, so he like gets his phone and some accessories. You look like the biggest sniveling little shit. <laughs> of all time but it's it's such a victory because you have the same voice now that you did back then. <laughs> yeah dude i was i felt like the coolest motherfucker i was like yeah check That's, this out so, i've got my jabra bluetooth headset <laughs> and you know i'm not using i'm fucking 17 who am i like, talking uh, to on bluetooth you're like all leather case look at this yeah. this is nice <laughs> If people haven't Such seen this, douche. if people haven't seen this video of Mark being a little douche, I'm gonna put it in the description so you can go see it. So that was like your first taste of internet fame, right? That's, um, yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. And um, and you know, um, your your father was there. That's uh, right. Your father was there with you. Um, and I also, the I, yeah, the best. And um, you know, I want to know what it was like uh, growing up with him and what kind of uh, inspiration he was to you in terms of your art. Is it more from your father? Is it more from your mom? Is it a mixture? What 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 was your dad like uh, in terms of uh, your influence before the fame and then during the fame and then just also just your transition from a kid into a man with your dad? Oh because man, dude, he 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 was amazing. Um, he was just an amazing human being. He's he's no longer with us, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he uh, he was a French, like as Parisian as it gets, uh, dude, you know, a big flirt. He basically, I mean, he came from like a very, very broken home full mm -hmm. of abuse and um, emotional manipulation and all this shit. And he left that, he left his home like very early and just sort of made it on his own in fashion. Um, oh, really? My mom and yeah, yeah, he was in fashion his whole life. He worked at like Neiman Marcus for many years and then Escada for many years and then um, on, on the business side, but he always, I don't know, I mean, he just, he had incredible taste. Um, he was very strong-headed in terms of telling you exactly what it is you should be doing, mm. how you should look, why you don't look right, here's how to fix it, let me do this. Let me do that. 
everything's always needs to be better. You can do better. You must do better. Go and get it. You have to do it. You got to be the one that does it. You have to push, 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 push harder until you get it. So it was all that, like growing up, it was a very much, I mean, he loved the shit out of me. He right. loved me deeply. Yeah. Most precious thing in his life. And um, he wanted me to be success. He wanted me to be the best, the most successful version of myself that I could be. And like, you know, once they sort of found out that I wanted to be creative in some way, you know, he spent basically my whole childhood pushing me to do that. And as I grew into an adolescent and a young adult, I didn't like being pushed like that. Like right. I didn't like, you know, it's this classic like father son relationship. That's like, yeah, yeah. Fuck you, dude. I don't want to do that. You know, like I just want to like smoke weed and chill. Right. Um, and like do things on my own terms. And it, it was sort of at that point that I was, that I had transitioned and dropped out of college and started trying to like make music and produce beats and stuff. So I was like doing that on my own not taking it seriously, which I was a kid. I just, I wasn't taking it seriously, but he continuously said, you know, you need to be the one on stage. You need to be singing. You need to get out there. You need to take this more seriously. You know, let's get you a manager. Let's do this and that. And I was just like, I don't want that. Right. Um, and so years passed, you know, I kept working jobs that I didn't give a fuck about. And kept sort of half-assed, you know, in a, sort of in a half-assed way trying to do music. And then my dad started, you know, disappearing, I suppose. He had Alzheimer's. And right. so I was in New York at the time. I moved back to Dallas to help take care of him with my mom. And we did that for about four years. And we just sort of watched him decline. And... Right this period in Dallas where I was, you know, every day going to see him and, and helping my mom take care of him at, at this nursing home. And this was this transitional period for me where um, I became like closer with him than I ever did before because, because he was disappearing and could no longer speak and could no longer remember really anything. Although he, he remembered me, um, just like emotionally yeah. remembered me, right. um, that I was able to be really close and like, um, cherish him and love him in a way that I wasn't able to do before. Uh, because I didn't, because I didn't want to hear his shit basically. Right. You know, and, and like, so there was this really beautiful period of time. It's a beautiful and sad period of time for me where I'm losing him, but I'm also closer to him really than I ever was since, you know, since I was like a small kid. Um, and so it was very, I don't know, it was very special, very, very uh, beautiful period of time. And it also coincided with um, me getting my shit together musically right. and starting to get gigs at restaurants and bars in Dallas. And so he never got to see that. Like he, he, he never got to see me start to take it seriously and start to garner an audience and right. be the one on stage singing and getting it and hustling and all the shit that he told me to do year after year after year. I finally started doing it. And, um, I just know that he would fucking love to see it so goddamn much. dude. He could see it. He could see it. Cause you want to know something in, in that, like you said, it's a beautiful sadness, but like, you know, that those four years that your dad, uh, going through Alzheimer's and battling that, you know, your mom has to go through that too. And, yes. And you have to go through that too. So, you know, your mental state is probably not the best at that time. Um, right. so him though, and his energy from what you told me about him saying, listen, if you're going to do something, be the fucking best at it. You know, I don't care if you want to fucking be a janitor, you better be the best fucking janitor in the world. Right. Um, if it wasn't for your dad, do you think you would have got that confidence to be like, you know what? I'm going to post this shit on the internet. You know what? I'm going to go do these gigs. I'm going to go 
put myself out there and for the world to see and just be like, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to hit record and I'm going to play it. Probably not, man. Probably not. I mean, I, I doubt it. I mean, you know, he, he was the side. My mother is the side of me that is like, hopefully this was reflected in me in some way, but like she is the kind, gentle, loving spirit that is, that I, I hope has affected me in some way is something that I try to, to, to demonstrate in some of my songs is this like, love each other, be good to each other, be kind to each other. That whole thing is a big part of my shit. And, and, and a big part of the way that I, that I go about my daily life and treat my friends, et cetera. And so that's a big part of me and that's my mom for sure. But right. um, you know, my dad is the, is, is very much the get out there and do it side that the like um, the push until you get somewhere side. And that's something that I had never had that I never, well, maybe it was in there, but I never used it uh, until right. very recently, you know, right. until the last few years. And so maybe like losing him, push that or, you know, something. I don't know. It, sometimes certain things happen. And, and obviously this is a horrible thing, you know, like I've always said, like uh, seeing a family member with Alzheimer's, it's like it's it's hard because you kind of lose them before you lose them. For sure. Yeah. But um, to see that you were able to take that and turn that into something that's just people always want to say that guys like us or like guys who make like viral videos and we sing about like titties and ass or whatever that like we're overnight successes. And in a way, I guess you could say that, but you and yeah, I, man. we've been trying to do that forever. Yeah, man. Forever. Yeah. And yeah. there's certain things. It's like you, uh, the reason I admire you so much is because you were like ready to go viral. Me, me and my buddy used to have this conversation all the time. It's like when people go viral, it's like, all right, are you ready to stay viral and keep mm. going? Yeah. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, um, yeah. I've been lucky enough to carve out myself a good piece of the pie, but like, you know, people are still waiting on my album. It was like, it was like Dr. Dre detox, uh, J electronica's <laughs> album. And then, right. my, and then my album, people are waiting. Yes. Yes. But you know, it's guys like you, and I have to thank you for this. Uh, you've relit that fire in me for sure about being like, oh, you know what? Like, nice, like why haven't you done this? And then the thing that really did it for me was when we had our, our uh versus battle oh yeah when we had our ig live battle Dude, so that, which was fun. fantastic um it's again it's this thing of like just fucking do the thing yeah just do the fucking thing yeah and then it'll be done and then you can do whatever the fuck you want but like let's do the thing you know what what inspires you to keep doing music is it that what you love to do is it is it because the people love it so much is it a mixture of both or is it like, dude, I've worked my whole fucking life for this. I'm not fucking this up. <laughs> it's definitely, it's the, it's the three. It's yeah, the three. Yeah. Like, I will always love making and fucking around with music. I don't, I'm not even close to the best at it. I'm not, like, I just do it in a way that I think reads is very entertaining. Right. So, so in that sense, I'm very lucky to have, like, cultivated that skill set unconsciously really for years and years and now i'm putting it to use and i happen to get paid for it and it's pretty dope yes so that's the c part is that i don't want to lose that the momentum is here and i'm really enjoying it it's like it's very rare to be able to get to do this for a living and particularly to be able to get to do it for a good living is like way more rare so than you ever thought than you ever thought see this is the thing that's oh, crazy wow is like what I try to tell people, it's like, yo, it's like what I do for a job. It's ridiculous to try to explain to people. Yeah. Like we, yeah. we're still in that era. They're like, Oh, you do that. Oh, you get paid from that. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, do okay. Actually. It's insane. It's an insane thing that we are able to do things that people generally do for fun. Yes. For, for money. I know. And, you know, it, you cannot, underplay that and take that for granted because like it will not it may very well not last no There's that's no the way truth. to know if it will or won't and i have no illusions about you know in five years being at a fucking call center again i hope that's not the case but yeah. it very well could be and 
I'm ready to do that if that's the case. I'm ready. Right. But you're going to do whatever you can to not do that. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Well, let's exhaust those so options fun, first. Man. Now, yeah. right. the music that people know us for and especially know you for is this yeah. funny, you know, X-rated, comedic right. type of music. Um, as an artist, do you feel at times possibly – you may be pigeonholed or you feel like, uh, you know, you maybe you want to branch out and do more serious music, even like, you know, like not with like a serious message, but just something that's close to you without like mentioning an ass oh, yeah. or like, yeah. you know, mentioning a fat ass pair of titties. Absolutely, dude. Yes. Yes. And I mean, I do do a good amount of shit like that. And I've been doing more and more of it, uh, you know, in the last year or so. Because, you know, I start when I started like playing in front of people, um, four years, four, 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 shit, three years ago, maybe it was three years ago, end of 2017. So yeah, a little over three years ago. Um, I, yeah, it's almost as a defense mechanism and as a way to guarantee attention, uh, and engagement with people in, in, in a room. We're I gonna did things that, that were, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Like, <laughs> You say pussy and people are listening. You say ass and people are listening. So it's just like, yeah, yeah. it's a way to get people engaged. And very unfortunately, it's still kind of a way to do that on the internet. Like, like those are always the videos that will do the best are things that are immediate, that are attention grabbing and that don't necessarily have a ton of substance. Right. You know, so it's, those are just the things that do the best on the internet. No. Um, so like when you're, when you're, tell me a little bit about like your creation, like uh, your creative process, like, is it all right now I'm, I have to do this or is it something like I want to do this today in terms of like, did you work on something before? Cause I know you go off the top. I've seen you yeah. work. I've, I've been on FaceTimes with you while you're working and shit. I've seen you work. I know yeah. Yeah. people think it's like planned shit. This is what you need to know about Mark is it is not. It's not. Never. It's not. He'll, <laughs> really, be ta- he'll be talking to me and just be like, get, 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 be, 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 yeah. And just start fucking singing. I don't just like, all right, dope. I'm like, okay, now we're doing it. So for you to have um, just that, that artist in you since when you were five to now, being able to translate, translate, translate that into, <laughs> into real music have you found that difficult or do you think that what you're doing right now in terms of transcending just from looping to like studio recording, is it just as easy for you or is it a little, it's hard as shit, right? It's definitely hard as shit to make the transition because like the, you know, I spent many years sort of learning traditional production and tried to do that and was not able to do that or didn't take it seriously enough, whatever the fuck. Then for the last four or five years, I've learned this looper and I'm really good at the looper. Like I, it's, 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 it's at a point for me where I feel like I am now reaching the stage with it where I, I, I'm reaching the limits of what I can do with it right. in terms of what satisfies me creatively. I could right. probably just keep doing bullshit on this looper and probably do fine, but like, it's not, it's get, I can see a horizon where it's no longer creatively interesting to me. Okay. So, you know, I am trying, like you said, to, tr- to, to grow and evolve my skill set, And now I'm trying to make an album, like a proper album. And I I'm am, trying to do that shit too. And it's fucking yeah, hard dude, as shit. It's hard, right? People are like, yo, just send me the stems and like this. I'm like, what the fuck is a stem? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, just the process of like writing a piece of work that's interesting and that moves and that sounds good. It it's different from this thing that I've gotten used to for the last several years. I just like, it's a totally different workflow. So I'm, I'm working with a couple people over here that are being extremely generous with their time and energy and getting me set back up in a DAW in a way that will allow me to basically um, play the way I play uh, like live, but it will be recording all of that oh, dope. so that I can then take those sections and like manipulate them and fuck with them and sort of make them, you know, make them into sequenceable, arrangeable tracks. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. 
Um, Has that transition been like somewhat discouraging at all in a little bit? Just being like, damn, dude, like this isn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, I came out to LA with like, basically I gave myself, (laughs) I said so fucking stupid now that I'm saying it. I'm like, I'm going to knock this LP out in a month. I'm going to go to LA. I'm going to work with these people. You know, how how long you been there? I've been here for three weeks now and I have nothing. (laughs) I don't have a fucking thing, not a fucking thing to show for it. So (laughs) I mean, I like, I've met with some cool people and had some exchanges and, and, so I, I'm working on it in that sense, but I have no music to show for it. Not a, not a fucking thing. Uh, you know, so it's just like, it's not going to take a month. It's going to take longer than a month. And I want it to be, I really want a collection of like nine to 12 really fucking dope things that don't, don't necessarily have to go together. doesn't need to be some concept album. I just need nine to 12 really excellent songs. So right. I'm working on it. I'm working hey, on it in, in my own way. That's the best thing too. Cause like, if you really think about it, it's like our fan bases are like really loyal fan bases. Like your fan base Super is much, loyal. is much bigger than mine. But like, I well, see, I see the community though. Like I'll read your comments. Like if I comment on one of your pictures, most people on your shit know who I am. So it's yeah. like, we're, we're joined at that. You got to think about it. We're chorus guys. Yeah, dude. Like we're like, let's just hit him with the chorus, a couple hit bars with the that chorus don't with a, a couple bars, chorus. a couple bars that don't mean shit, and right. then and then chorus, and then when you go to make a song, it's like, yeah, that doesn't work. No, and you're like, yeah, no, like the we, chorus we, is the little gemstone at the top, but you need to build the whole bracelet, the whole fucking all the links and the, oh, and the diamonds. And shit. It's the worst. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm like, damn, I have to write shit down. I know. I hate oh. that. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Um. All right. So since before, uh, you you were going to school for acting. You quit that. Yeah. Um, you tried to do like the finance world a little bit too, right? Yeah, I mean, not because I was interested in it. Just no. it was like the job I got. I did like m- mortgage loan servicing and fuck um, that shit. Fuck the fuck out of that shit. What was that like though? Like day to day. Um. I mean, it was only fun for me because I didn't care about the job Mm. and all of my favorite jobs I've had in that, that haven't been this job, um, were jobs that I didn't give a fuck about and and that I could sort of treat that way. Um, so like that one, I didn't give a fuck about. And I, and I worked with like three or four people who I really came to love. And so, you know, we would skip out on work and we go get drunk in the afternoon and come back and like, it was just it was a job that I didn't treat seriously at all. And so it, it like entertained that part of my brain that was like, fuck this shit. I don't even care. We're having fun. Um, and that, that's like most of the jobs that I had before this. And this is really the, the first job that I've taken seriously in any way. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, it, it, it's so uh, weird that, how we that's can actually do- the part of it that I don't like. I don't like having to take it seriously. It's don't. the worst part. When yeah. things become unfun for me, I can't do them. Dude, I know I'm the same way. And they're and like, yo, like, like you should make to- an album. And I'm like, yeah, but like, then it's not fun though. Right. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> yeah, I would like that too. But like, it kind of sucks doing that. I don't really want to do that. And, then it's like, and, like- then, and I feel like a lot of musicians and artists, it's like, we also just don't like being told what to do. That's very true. You yeah, know, and, the, and it's not, true. and it's not that we're assholes, but we're dicks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want you to fucking dictate my, my life. I yeah. Want to, and it's and, like, and also, you know, I get a feeling that a lot of these like chart toppers, like musicians that are really crank shit out and do it. I wish hard. I think that they take the work much more seriously than you or I. Like, yes. I, 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 and I don't have an, I'm ne- probably never going to be in any place close to those people because I just can't really take it that seriously. I try and I try so hard. And it's like, I think about my life and I think about like the things that I've done and people are like, dude, you've gotten all the way here and you haven't really gave a shit. And, <laughs> and then I'm like, damn, what would yeah. happen if I actually gave a shit? Right. But then it's like. But I don't want to give that, a shit. That ruins it. <laughs> that fucking ruins it. 
wins it. The giving the shit, then you're Kanye. Then you're giving a shit about everything, and then your life sucks. Yes. And then you're stuck in a giant white monastery of a home where, like, the counters are sinks, and, like, you have this life that is, you don't even, I mean, it's awful. It's awful. I don't want that. No, and and it's like, you know, I I look at you, too, because, like, you're always just super positive on the internet. You're always super positive. Um, is that something that you're dealing with? Like, just in terms of as being an artist, uh, yeah. I feel like creative people, for some reason, we're just kind of just, like, prone to being sad sometimes. Yes. You know? And, like, we just love it. Like, we just kind of, like, love being sad, but we hate it at the same time. Yeah, for sure. For you as a creative, do you think that with a huge following – do you think that it's your responsibility to show them or to speak to them on a level where it's like, Hey, listen, today's going to be okay. Um, but that also helps us in the same way too. Oh dude, it's therapy. Yeah. yeah. I mean like, yeah, I don't want to make any, uh, like, yeah, I would really rather not deceive my audience into thinking that I'm like happy all the time. It's really not true. You yeah. know, I'm in fact, if anything, Like the real, the truth of it is, is that this job has filled my life with more anxiety and more stress and more unhealthy emotions than by far any other job I've had. Like for sure, far and away. Because at other jobs, fucking sucks. It sucks because at other jobs we could hide a little bit. Yeah, I mean the other. No, I mean and honestly, like. The other jobs, it wasn't even, I guess maybe you're right. Like there was always this creeping thing of like, what am I get? Like I'm a, at that point I was like approaching 30. What am I going to do with my life outside of this? You know, that was always the big existential question. But outside of that, I really was genuinely pretty content because like I made enough money to live. I had friends that I loved. And I was able to do pretty much what I wanted to do outside of work, you know? And now I am the work. I can never get away from it. It's always there. It's always demanding of my attention. And I'm expected to constantly iterate, progress, and perform. And, and, and all of that and all of the responsibilities and obligations that come along with that, I want people who are thinking about dipping their toe into this shit to really, really consider. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying you got to be prepared for this to be a job and a job that's like more demanding than all the other fucking jobs that, that, that you have right now. Because it's like, it's a lot, man. It's a lot. And, and people and, think it's easy. Yeah. Like, I can't be funny every day. Like, I yeah. try to be. <laughs> I try. Yeah. I, I really try to be, and it's like I try to be creative every day. But it's like, yo, if, if I wake up and don't do something work related, I'm gonna be homeless. I right. That's right. what the yeah. anxiety that we wake up with. And yeah. and and listen, it's obviously people have to wake up and go to a normal job. If you don't go to your normal job, you will be homeless. It's the same, but it's, it's the but same. You, but it's like you are not the product. Yeah, you know, in those cases, it's like you're working for a product, you're working for a a company full of people who are all working together on a product. But here it's different. You are the thing. You are the commodity. You are the asset. Yeah. And so it's always about like, you have to be this, you have to present as a polished stone. Or even if you make bones about, even if you make, even if you let people in and let them know that you're imperfect, that's still part of the thing. It's still part of the show. Right. Like, and like even, even with if like you're honest sh- with people, it's part of the show. But this is like, even with what I'm doing now, it's like, you know, it, it's a show about mental health and it's about being open and honest and like, you know, having conversations with people like you who are, you know, in the same field and we have the same, you know, I guess, uh, sound, I guess, lyrically, I guess. Whatever yeah. the fuck, wherever they want to put us together. Because people love right. loving us together, and I love it. I know, they do, and I love it too. I'm like, Mark's way cooler than me. This guy's got equipment. <laughs> oh, bullshit. I was like, I just sing to my phone. But That's um, beautiful. That thank you. Beautiful. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> um, you know, I think of it like this. When guys like you and me, once we start being open, 
people will find some way to like shit on us mm. and every day like mm. you know it's like yeah we read i read comments every day we're like yeah this kid's gay now i'm just like okay yeah or just be like oh yeah. like yeah like this was like uh like do this or like make this music like don't make serious <laughs> yeah. this shit's gay i'm just like right. all right you know what i mean it's like having a regular job i miss having a regular job sometimes i really fucking do oh i miss it i miss it often Often. I really, I, honestly. I really yeah. do. But now I can't go get a regular job. Right. People are going to Google me. It's going to be fucking <laughs> ass, ass tits. Oh, that's a by, good point. Ass tits bipolar. It's going to be tits. much harder to get a regular job. Yeah. It's like, oh, this dude's uh, bipolar and nuts. It's like, <laughs> right. We're not going to let this guy drive. We're going to let this guy drive a crane now. This guy's fucking yeah, crazy. Sort of, <laughs> yeah. What, this dude serving me enchiladas? What the fuck? <laughs> Here, order yeah, up. Aren't, like, aren't you the stuck to titties guy? I'm like, yeah, thanks. All right, I'll see you later. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, fucking, <laughs> yeah. We've sort of trapped ourselves a little bit. It's true because and that's what but, gets me anxious. That's what makes me scared. That's interesting, man. You know, th- I'm trying to think about what what makes me anxious, and and a lot of it is like, um, yeah, I think a, a a big part of it is is the looming future of this time when I no longer have any ideas that are interesting to people mm. and I, 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 I cease to become relevant or interesting and I have to let this die. And that is a huge worry to me. It's just always there. It's like always a small knot in my stomach and I don't want to, you know, it's always this thing of like, it's really not super attractive to complain too much about this because it's like, we're doing the dopest fucking thing. <laughs> and like anyone I feel bad in their saying right it. mind. Yeah. But, but like, this is true. It's like, yes, it's super cool. And yeah, we can pretty much do whatever the fuck we want and we make good money and all of that. That's true. But it comes with a mental tax. There's a tax that you have to pay on that. Yeah. And and, and that tax is real and it's, and it sucks. And so people should just be aware of it. That like, that's part of the deal. Like when you're coming into it, you got to know, like, listen, if you're going to go all the way in, you're going to lose a lot of shit. You and will lose. Yes. You will. You're going to lose friends, peace of mind. Peace of you're mind. Gonna, you're going to lose yeah. friends. You're going to yeah. lose, uh, relationships. You're going to lose a yeah. lot of shit. So yeah, like, man. you know, and I, me and Mark were talking about this before. I don't know how motherfuckers are really famous. Yeah, right, right. We're yeah, like, yo, like, like this is enough for me. I've hit my dude. pinnacle. If I get any more, I don't want to get any more famous. I want people to just know imagine. me. Imagine. Oh, I my can't, God. I can't. I can't. And then, you know, for you and I, uh, I think our futures really depend on what we want to do. So if we don't do shit, yeah. we, we don't get shit. Like, I wish right. I, there's so many times, like, I wish I went to college. Like, I wish I did these things now. Yeah. I need something with dividends, <laughs> you know, some, some, something. some long game strategy. Cause everything I do right now is like fee based, but you know, I get a fee. Uh, I need to start diversifying and investing in shit. Yeah. 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 Like I didn't, I didn't yeah. have a 401k until this year. So I was just oh, like, nice. Yeah, Dude, so, me too. Yeah, just I'm, recently. Nice. Hey, Hey. Yeah, we want to live past 60. Woo! Yes. No, but um, listen, I know you're a busy guy. Um, I just have a couple more questions for you, if that's oh, okay. Yeah, man. I know. No, um, yeah, absolutely. In terms of taking care of your own mental health, what are some things that you try to do on a daily basis to kind of just keep yourself centered and kind of just, you know, keep you in a, in a mood to create and also in a mood to fucking just be able to get out of bed in the morning? That's what people don't. I so that's the message I try to spread on this show is like I had my dad on here and uh, oh nice yeah and I did some Q and A's but like I wanted to have somebody that's from you know my era what we do the influence of yeah. social media every day um, what are some things that you try to implement into your daily routine um, just in mm. terms of keeping your mental state somewhat secure I will tell you man I mean Jesus like. It really is fucking hard to do sometimes. And I don't think I am doing everything I should be to yeah. keep my mind right. I think there's more I could be doing. Um, 
But in terms of what I do, you know, I'm also very lucky to ha- come from a childhood and parents that raised me with a lot of love and and it wasn't super dysfunctional. So like my resting state, if you will, is pretty is is pretty healthy. It's like That's pretty positive. Thing. Yeah. It, it's a really beautiful thing. I extremely lucky to have that. So like it makes dealing with this, I think, probably quite a bit easier. Um, but but what I do is I do things that I'm a very curious person and 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 I like becoming obsessed with things and looking at things and reading about things and stuff. So I tend to find things sort of to obsess over for a while that make me happy. And like recently that's been like electric scooters and shit. So like I've been, and then while I've been here in LA, I've been like, doing shit like that too. Yeah. Dude, it's so much <laughs> fun. When I was in New York bird, you know, the scooter company yeah, yeah. They sent me one of their, huge shout out to bird because like they didn't even like they didn't make me do anything for them. they just sent me their new scooter oh that's love. like i didn't love. i didn't want that shit they just sent <laughs> me one and i got it and i was like what the fuck is this i got out on the road i was like this is fucking amazing <laughs> like i fucking liberated like i am floating in the shit <laughs> i'm going like 22 miles an hour i'm floating by Hey, I'm smoking bowls and gliding <laughs> down the street. So that, that like upped my happiness factor by like 150%. And then when I came here to LA, obviously I didn't have the scooter with me. And so I started looking at more shit and I started reading about the electric unicycles, you know, the yeah. one wheel shit yeah, that those people are, are standing up on. They are amazing. I bought one. I got it here in LA and I have been, it's a steep learning curve. I learned how to do it. I'm unicycling my ass all over downtown LA Super and dope. I love it, dude. So it's like, I wake up in the morning, you know, I make sure to get out of bed. I take a deep breath. Um, I try not to look at the internet too much in the morning. Cause that yeah. sort of fucks me up. Me too. And uh, yeah, man. And then I get on that wheel or I just go on a, it's whatever it is for you. It's like, I just get out and get out, go on a walk, but basically let the fucking breeze touch my face and take a deep breath and really try and be cognizant of the fact that you are alive, that it's a really beautiful thing that we get to be alive for a short amount of time. Like I try and remind myself of that um, a lot, that just like the simple act of being here is, is, um, is, is pretty, pretty dope. And so it it sucks to have to waste it on like bad feelings and anxiety sure. and shit. You know? you know, and it's like, you know, I think we overcomplicate um, mental health a lot, uh, especially in this country. Like we mm. overcomplicate it a lot. And it's because the conversations weren't as open as they used to be. Now it's like, look, the way, the way the, Tire, uh, tirade that you just went on right there, that yeah. beautiful one, just made yeah. me feel better. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, damn, I want to go outside and let the breeze fucking slap my fucking titties <laughs> around too. It's that simple, dude. Sometimes it I mean, is. It, it can be. It can be. That's, no, no, Sometimes no, no, no. It's, not, the, it's a good starting point to realize, right. you know what? Because we spend so much time just focusing on just dumb, stupid shit. Yeah. And that's what true. adds to our anxiety levels too. Um, yeah. and something as simple as being like, you know, it's just a nice to do that. We don't say that it's going to cure everything, but something like that is just a beautiful start just to be like, yo, it can like, get you in a place where you're more ready to be for sure. For sure. To feel a little better. Yeah. And, and my last question that, uh, I wanted to say, you know, since, uh, th- get a little insight on this before you ask it. What what do you do to get rid of that shit? Okay. Um, in the morning, uh, I wake up. I check on my girl. She checks on me. Um, she'll always ask me if I'm okay in the morning, which is like... Uh, oh, that's really nice. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, she'll just be like, you okay? And I'm like, yes. Um, and then I try to do 30 minutes of meditation where I know like if my, once my girl goes to work, like I know she's good. She's out. Um, yeah. She's started her day. 
once I get rid of that and I could kind of have that 30 minutes to myself to just be like, yo, like stop thinking about everything. All right. Stop thinking. Don't even think about what you have to do later in the day. Don't think about what you have to post on the internet. Don't think about who you have to have a phone call with. I hate phone calls. Uh, yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, I hate him. Me but, uh, too. I hate him. So I'm like, don't forget about all that. Um, take this 30 minutes to just kind of figure yourself out where you're at, where you're at, where you want to be, and what we're gonna do today to kind of get there. I fully have adopted the if I just get one percent better every day, I'm gonna be all right. Yeah, and that's, that's it. Nice. You know, and you know, I I still I have therapy four times a month, you know, um, uh, I take medications. I take uh, an antidepressant. Uh, I take an anxiety disorder uh, medication and something oh, yeah. for, for my bipolar I take as well. But it's like, if I don't have that 30 minutes or to, to an hour to myself in the morning, mm. it's a wrap for me. Mm. I just get, I, I've just got myself to a point that if it, it throws me off so much uh, that I just, my brain, I'm an overthinker. My brain goes to places just where it shouldn't be, where it has no business belonging. So if, right. I, don't, if I don't remind myself, that it's like, yo, life is good, dude. Like, relax. Stop trying to be a self-sabotager. Yeah. I'm going to be okay. Um, so right. that's what I just try to do. I just try to take that hour in the morning where I stay off my phone and I just chill. and just. That's nice, up. man. Yeah, because I just feel like a lot of people sabotage their own lives absolutely absolutely and, and i have fallen victim to that because i'm like uh, like I, like we were talking about before like we're artists so like we try to like we think we have to be sad to be good at our jobs yeah <laughs> yeah you know it's not true it's, it's not, not true it's not true so everyone's like oh like you're a comedian you're depressed i'm just like no i just so happen to be depressed at yeah times. right <laughs> <laughs> but it has nothing yeah. to do with my work it has right. nothing to do with my work but um yeah but uh, yeah, man, it's just about taking time for yourself, not caring what like your mom or dad is saying at that time, what your girl right. is saying at that time, because you can't be the best version of yourself all the time. You just can't. It's impossible. It's true. So just do whatever you can to try and get back to that point. And that's all I try to do is take that hour, do it an hour out of a day. Mm. Changes the genetic, I don't know what it is. Something in my makeup changes in my brain where I'm just like, all right, like I don't have to be a fucking asshole today. Right. You, you know, I'm just like, damn, dude, like, oh, I'm actually a nice person. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, a beautiful thing, man. Yeah. A man. Really beautiful thing. That, that's just what I try to do. And then for, for people out there watching, take, try to do 10 minutes at first. Yeah. That's, that's where I started. 10 minutes, then it went 20, then it went 30. And then an hour I get out of bed, I'm like, damn, dude, like, I'm okay. Like, today's going to be all right. That's yeah. Fine shit that's uh, the shit man my last question actually i have two more like two i'm sorry uh how dare you i know i know you're a busy man uh just tell me a little bit about your mom and uh what your relationship is like now now that you're fucking mark rebel tits and <laughs> yeah. uh you're one, you're one of the most famous uh uh because listen we talk about sex and yeah. my mom used to fucking hate my shit <laughs> what's your mom's opinion on your music? What is your relationship like now? Uh, well, now that you're doing all these very sexually explicit music. Uh, yeah. I, I always ask other people this because I want to know what it's like to deal with their mom when we sing about like titties and assholes and fucking and shit. Yeah, dude. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, it's a thing. It's definitely a thing. I mean, <laughs> like, uh, what did she tell her <laughs> friends? You know what I mean? Dude. I, let me just say first that I love her so goddamn much. She's, she's just <laughs> incredible. She's like, she's a clinical psychologist. So I, I, you know, I bounce uh -huh. a lot of mind stuff off of her, a lot of brain shit off of her. She's been a psychologist for like 40 plus years. And is, um, she, is she French as well? Or she was here in the States? No. Yeah. She's from South Carolina. She's yeah, from she's South like Carolina. Do you Southern speak French Bell, though too? Yeah, man. I'm a dual citizen. Yeah. Oh shit. Yes, sir. So after the yeah. election, you could bounce if you want. I'm out this bitch. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere in the EU. Yeah. All right. So that the, so... fucking tangerine wins. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, so I love her so so much. She um, she has just always been like number one cheerleader. You know, like 
always there to support me no matter what. No matter what the fuck I'm doing, it's always love, support, encouragement, and like genuine care and love. And so that's like, that's just the shit, man. I don't know what I would do without her, honestly. She's, she's incredible. That's just awesome. Incredible human being. That's yeah. awesome. Because, um, you know, like I said, like, uh, we, we don't have the most uh, clean backgrounds musically. No. No, we so, don't. We don't. And she doesn't like that. She doesn't like the tits and ass shit. She has but to hate it. She, My mom yeah, hates. She does. She, she doesn't like it. And so, you know, it's like I tell her whenever I put new shit out, I tell her whether or not she can listen to it. Oh, that's and cute. the good news is like now I have at least enough of a catalog of stuff that's not about ass and shit <laughs> that she can listen to a good amount of my shit and show – a good amount of my shit to her friends. That's like, you know, positive or encouraging or uplifting or whatever. Um, but yeah, man, she, she doesn't like it. Yeah. She, awesome. she doesn't like the ass stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't, I mean, most moms don't like that. We're hard cells. You For know? sure. My mom's to like, mothers, oh, I think to, <laughs> we're hard cells to mothers. I've had a few really dope, like, liberated mothers at my shows but they're few and far between you know yeah you know it's it's very hard to just be oh uh how's your son doing oh he's good he's just singing about tits and dick yeah and ass. <laughs> <laughs> he just released this new song about sucking pussy it's great check it out barbara you know it's just like not <laughs> oh my god it's great um last question is um when's the album coming oh well, I'll any tell you any for sure, ideas? Not coming this month. <laughs> Definitely not coming this month. But I will say that if I can get this thing um, that this amazing fucking musician is 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 helping me figure out how to how to like get my workflow into this DA, DAW arrangement system that that I think it's just a really cool way of thinking about like laying it down. It would make it a hell of a lot easier to do this. And so if we can manage to work that out, which I think we will, then I am expecting to have it at least done and hopefully released before the end of the year. Oh, dope. I would really, really like that. Super dope. Um, yeah. Cause once I get out of here and go back to New York, which would be November, um, I don't, you know, I don't have anything on the books. So, so that that's on the books. Very dope. So if I can leave here with a way to compose my album more easily, then I don't see any reason why I shouldn't be able to knock it out, uh, you know, before the end of the year. Just save me 16 bars, bro. Oh, hell yeah, dog. You know. Once we get, once I get back up in New York uh, in the winter, we'll link up. We'll get in the studio. Have some fun. Sounds great, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show, bro. I know you are a busy, busy man these days. Yo, All dude, right? I love you. And, and uh, I love you I too, appreciate man. appreciate you. Uh, I really appreciate you having me on and talk. It's nice to talk about some serious shit. You know, it's like, um, Shit is serious sometimes. We Shit, talk is serious. About it. Shit is serious sometimes. Yeah. Is there anything you want to say to your fans uh, and also let people know where they can find you on the interwebs? Oh, man. Well, you know, it's markrebier.com, M-A-R-C-R-E-B-I-L-L-E-T.com. That'll point you to everywhere else on the internet I am, as well as to tickets. Uh, whenever this episode's coming out, I'm not sure. When is it coming out? Tomorrow, Friday. Fuck yeah. So yes. October 30th and uh, – uh, sorry. Halloween night, October 31st, and November 1st, I'm playing at the Bayside Drive-In in Burlingame, which is right by San Francisco. It's going to be crazy. Halloween fucking night. Killing Tickets it. are still available. Tomorrow's show in LA is sold out, uh, but the two in Burlingame are still going. So get your damn tickets. I'll see you there. And, you know, my, my, the people who follow me already know that I love them very, very much and that I would not be doing this without them and uh yeah man it's all about that at the end of the day you know That's it's all it. about that relationship yeah straight facts like you said everybody if you're in the san francisco area go put a sexy fucking costume on and go watch mark fucking tear the fucking house down mark thank you so much for coming on buddy i love you you know that danny i love you too my friend it's all right be, be safe and uh we'll be in touch uh, and uh Hell that's yeah it. that's off i'll see you back Thanks. in the city my friend will do bye man later bro Late seas. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> All right. Welcome back. Uh, great interview. Um, 
Mark's just a real genuine guy. He's a great guy to talk to. Um, very funny, very interesting cat. Uh, I always learn something new when I'm talking to him. But, uh, you know, he's one of those guys that has just been grinding in uh, the success shows. And uh, I found it very interesting about uh, how he spoke about his father uh, kind of being that guiding light in terms of being the harder, you know, if you're going to go for it, go for it, and his mom being kind of the nurturer. So that's uh, it's, that's very ideal. And then also him talking about the anxiety of what it's like to be a performer. Um and an entertainer and being in this business, how difficult it could, uh, it can be. So, uh, you know, I think he had a lot of great points, but, uh, talking to Mark, like if you see that interview like that, it's just, we're genuine friends. So it's just two friends having a conversation. It's just like, it's very natural. It's very fun. And, uh, he's funny as shit. So, uh, you know, uh, like he said, you could find him at, uh, Mark, uh, M A R C R E B I L L E T dot com uh and you can check him out and all of his social links are on there if you're in the san francisco area i do recommend go see him do his thing he is a savage um also for our show uh make sure to check out 101 life.com for all your wellness needs um also make sure to please leave a like leave a sub uh script channel with us and the channel here uh, i'm really proud of what we're doing over here channel's been doing great and, uh, you know, also, if you want to go an extra step further, you can go to patreon.com slash OTC pod, uh, where we, we will be, where we will be having a, uh, weekly zoom call with everybody in there. As many people as you can get in there and just everyone taking their turns to talk about what they're dealing with. But, uh, yeah. So, um, thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you had a great time. Please stay safe. Enjoy your weekend. And, uh, yeah, I fucking love you. Your brain game's fire. Peace. Aye.